And my name is Ben. I'm Janelle. And uh, we're the Kamarowskis and we're the ones that um, started the Thriveless Fair. This is our third year and um, it has grown every year. We've met some wonderful people. <laughs> Not including you. <laughs> okay. In the back here is our tiny home. We actually call it our mansion. Um, the reason why we call it a mansion is because we moved here six plus years ago from Colorado and we lived in a 12 by 14 foot tiny home. So to us, this is our mansion. And I'd like to take you a tour on it. Right, on Come on in. Here's our mansion. <laughs> so uh, this was a 16 by 32 foot barn shed that we uh, purchased from Sturdy Built Sheds in Clayton. And they brought it up in pieces. It took them three days to construct the shell. And we were living out in a tent um, out in the, the front here until November 23rd or something yeah. like that. Um, we were waiting to get our wood burning stove in and they finally got it in. And so we moved in here. The, the last night that we spent outside, it was 23 degrees. So we were really happy that our <laughs> wood burning stove got in. And then throughout the process, we have finished the uh, inside ourselves. And so we built the, um, the wall and the loft, which our son and grandson uh, stayed in until they uh, we're older. And we had them bump the roof up a couple feet higher because the boys that were living with us at that time stayed up in the loft, so it gave them a little, a little more, bit more head space. Room. And extra windows, extra windows French yeah. doors, wheels were all extra things that we asked them to put in. The upstairs is just storage now. Yep, mainly for the thriveless fair. <laughs> And then uh, we recently have finished our uh, bathroom off. We have a very unique uh, way of um, going to the bathroom is we have a composting toilet. And essentially what it is, it's a five gallon bucket that I have built a, uh, a little toilet seat in and then we when that bucket fills up, we, we cover it with uh, pine shavings to keep the smell down. And actually, it doesn't just keep the smell down. When you put pine shavings on it, you cannot smell, um, you cannot smell the, the defecation. And then the when pine it, shavings in the... Yeah, they, these are the shavings here that, that we put. So we do our business, cover it up with the pine shavings. And then uh, ultimately when that's filled, we take it out to a compost bin that we have and we keep that compost for a year. And then we take it out with my tractor, put it uh, next to it, and we usually wait another year. And then we end up ultimately putting that on our garden for uh, fertilizer. And it smells just like wonderful organic, uh, organic and matter. Completely safe to use completely if you safe. let it sit that long. Yep. <laughs> no human pathogens or anything like that. And then our shower here, um, Shower, I used metal roofing to kind of keep that rustic look to it. And uh, so yeah, that's our, that's our shower, which we recently just uh, finished. You want to show them our yep. tiny bedroom? Our tiny bedroom here. And again, living in a tiny home, one of the major issues obviously is storage. And so, we are continually trying to downsize. Um, our kind of philosophy is what we don't use in a year, if we've not used it in the past year, we get rid of it. We donate it, sell it, whatever. <coughs> so again, it just adds to kind of the simple life that um, living in a tiny home forces you to do because you definitely can't have a lot of stuff. And for me, this is the hardest part about living in a tiny house because the supplies we have for the fair, I don't have a place to put them 
that's out of sight like you would in a large home and so we just have to get used to sometimes having stuff feel like cluttered and I don't always like that but we've learned to live with it. And well there are a lot of positives only a few negatives <laughs> so one of the things is they, they don't make um, a lot of wood-burning stoves that are uh, compatible with the size of house. This it actually is significantly overpowered to the point where during the winter our boys would up, up at night they would be like don't put any more wood on the fire it's cooler down here but it's very warm up there and they actually when they were living up there they left the window open all year round um, to try to um, get rid of that heat and subsequently as a result of that uh, this is all insulated with fiberglass insulation up above here but we chose not to insulate that area up there simply because we wanted it to not retain that heat because it was so hot the other issue is we don't have a thermostat so when we go away for a weekend when we come back however cold it is outside is how cold it is in here so as a result we have become very cold tolerant and when we go to hotels um i travel for a living oftentimes i take janelle with me we travel uh, to a hotel it has the temperature has to be down to its lowest because we're just so used to in the morning um, the fire's gone down if it's been cold at night it might be 45 degrees in here in the morning so you get up you put your hoodie on get the fire going and within a half an hour it's it's comfortable enough in here and we have fun with it because every fall we have a contest to see who's the first one to break down and start a fire and it's a real badge of honor too because we're like yeah i can't believe you wimped out you were the first one to <laughs> but yeah we have fun with it yeah and so yeah this is our beautiful tiny home um we are very happy that we live this way yeah. one of the things that is kind of our our mantra is this and our daughter made this for us and it's um live simply so others can simply live and we are completely debt free here. And as a result, we can put on fares like this. Um, there are often times where there are, um, we've had people that have been homeless that have stayed on the property and we try to help them get on our feet. And we can do that yeah. because we don't have a big mortgage. We don't have a lot of stuff. And that's what we live by is we really enjoy living simply. To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, Homestead Remedies, How to Be Self-Sufficient When the Grid Goes Down, Wild Edible and Medicinal Plants, Hydrotherapy, and End Time Bible Prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.